So I now have my copy in hand, so I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, uh, approval of the agenda, if there's a mover and a seconder. Councillor Doherty and Councillor Osanic, thank you very much. All those in, in favor of the agenda? Carried, thank you. Uh, confirmation of minutes. This is from our February 9th meeting. We've all had a chance to look at them. Is there a mover and a shaker? Thank you, Councillor Osanic and Councillor Oosteroff wants to get his name in the minutes. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, any corrections, omissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Carried. Thank you very much. Disclosure of pecuniary interest. Seeing none. Delegations, we have none. Uh, briefings, we have none, although we have a couple of information items that staff hopefully will be able to speak to. So uh, our first piece of business tonight is the update on the federal announcement for a single use plastic ban and the city single use plastic reduction strategy. Um, who would like to speak to that? Is there a staff member that, thank you very much, Mr. McClatchy. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, so uh, the city's current single use plastics reduction strategy was endorsed by uh, EITP in 2019 and then by council. And it uh, included removing single use plastics from the Grand Theater and Invisible Center. Um, some community outreach through Sustainable Kingston incorporation of single use plastics reduction into the city's events policies. And in the event that the federal regulations banning single use plastics were going to be delayed or not forthcoming at all, then we were uh, readying for a municipal bylaw to restrict the distribution of plastic shopping bags and polystyrene food containers. So the main purpose of tonight's information report is to update the committee on the federal government's um, continued progress and commitment towards a ban uh, on commercial distributions of several types of single use plastics by the end of 2021. Um, the proposed federal ban uh, will target plastic shopping bags and polystyrene takeout food containers, um, but also other things like cutlery and straws and, and other types of items. So because of the impending federal regulation, staff are holding off on further development of a municipal bylaw. And uh, we will be monitoring progress of the federal regulations that have been promised uh, in 2021. Once we know the details of single use plastic reduction regulations, uh, we will work with Sustainable Kingston and others to support awareness and adoption uh, um, and compliance with the new regulations by municipal operations and the community. Um, happy to answer questions, and I note that there's uh, staff here also from Breck and Leisure and from Solid Waste um, who, uh, who may be able to join in. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from the committee? Seeing none, um, Councillor Osanic, can you quickly hey, take, take the chair? Chair and recognize. Thank you very much. Uh, Paul, is, do we have, have we seen, has it gone through first and second reading? Do we have any idea uh, what the main points are for, uh, for the federal legislation? Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, we don't, we have the original description of what the regulations will look like uh, that come from uh, their 2020 announcement. Um, but there has been no, uh, no draft regulation released publicly yet that I'm aware of. Yeah, because rumor has it there's probably going to be a fall election. And I, I know from our 2019 uh, discussions, we were hoping to have begin small and kind of build upon it. Uh, if it looks like the feds are dragging their heels or another government may not be as keen to do it. Perhaps we need to consider doing it municipally. I, I will say that we have undertaken a public consultation 
specifically about the prospect of a municipal bylaw and it was generally quite supportive of that. So we're in a good place there. Uh, and we have looked at other models for a municipal bylaw. So we do have a structure in place if we, if we needed to uh, mobilize uh, quickly, if that was the case, we're in, a good, we're in a good position, I believe. Excellent, thank you very much. Any further questions? That was an, oh, Councillor Osanek, I'm jumping the gun again. It's okay, I return the chair to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we will, uh, that was an information report followed by another information report, which is the clean neighborhoods. And that comes from transportation and public works. It's an anti-litter. Uh, policy. Who would like to speak to that? Any? I, I was. Uh, sorry, oh, Chair. Oh, that's I was okay. trying to find all my buttons to to click on. <laughs> I expect you to uh, to pass that first report so quickly. <laughs> There's a baseball game on. <laughs> okay, we're on it. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to just take a couple minutes of your time. Uh, yeah and uh, introduce this report. It was uh, originally uh, led by Bill Lennon, who I, I know all of you are now aware has uh, left us as of last Friday. Um, however, uh, I do have uh, Miss Deanna Ridgely with us. She is a public works uh, operations coordinator. And uh, actually it's this, a lot of the work that's gone into this program has been Miss Ridgely's work. So I'm really pleased that she's here tonight. She'll present it to you. I just wanted to, to say that, uh, as the report indicates, the kickoff date is scheduled to be the 26th of the month. And we had specifically selected that date because Pitchin was, was planning to have the, the two weeks prior leading to that. I wanted to make sure that, that we didn't confuse uh, the issues. Um, because of the, the uh, lockdown requirements, Pitchin has decided at this point in time that they will they will have to defer their, their uh, spring collection and program, hopefully not completely cancel it. So we are going to uh, proceed as if we're, we're planning to implement this on the 26th in the event that, that uh, things change again and for some reason public health feels that it's not appropriate, uh, we would have to, uh, to defer and we would notify council of that. Let's keep our fingers crossed that we don't need to do that. So I would, uh, I'm really pleased to hand the, uh, the floor over to uh, Deanna Ridgely, uh, if the chair is uh, in agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ridgely, the floor is yours. Uh, just trying. Oh. There you are. <laughs> All right. So good evening and thank you to the chair and committee members. It is no surprise to anyone that litter is a problem in our community and that despite best efforts, litter cleanup continues to be a major challenge for us. There are many waste reduction programs that the city runs and several processes that follow up on illegal dumping and property standards issues. Many of these programs are listed in this report. But what happens when waste ends up on the ground? Regardless of how the waste is generated <clears throat> or how, how the waste is generated, it remains on the ground and gets in our waterways if it is not cleaned up. Although Public Works does perform spring cleanup blitzes and regular cleanups throughout the year, it is a never ending battle against litter. There are many community groups such as Sustainable Kingston that organize large scale pitch in weeks in the spring and fall, which help immensely. However, litter still conti continues to be a very visible concern throughout the year. The province of Ontario even issued a reducing litter and waste in our communities discussion paper to focus on waste aversion and litter. One provincial action was to declare the second Tuesday in May, this year is May 11th, as the Provincial Day of Action on Litter in Ontario. Most efforts focus on spring cleanup. After the snow has melted, you can see litter everywhere. The spring cleanups are extremely helpful, but more effort year round is needed. In 2020, most community groups could not plan cleanup days and this created many challenges for city departments in responding to concerns. We reached out to the community through a public engagement survey via Get Involved Kingston at the end of 2020 to get feedback 
on interest in helping with the litter problem. The results were a resounding yes. People did want to help. The Clean Neighborhoods program was developed to provide residents and community groups an opportunity to clean up litter on our streets, parks, and along shorelines, and do so at a time that works best for them year round. People can register for all avenues through offered by customer experience. The location and timing of the cleanup will be confirmed and they can pick up a package to assist them in their cleanup. Once, cleanup, once the cleanup is complete, they simply call or respond via email and Public Works will pick up the bags for disposal. The Clean Neighborhoods Program communication plan also focuses on the impact that litter has on the environment and encourages litter cleanup even on a small scale. The plan includes signage to bring awareness to the litter problem. In addition to the Clean Neighborhoods Program, Public Works will be reviewing the garbage collection process in our public spaces, the frequency at which cans are emptied and how full each can is when it is emptied will help inform future decisions and placement of garbage cans so that they can be placed in the most effective locations and find efficiencies in garbage collection in public spaces. So that's a quick overview of the program and I would be happy to answer any questions that the committee has. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. Uh, I'll turn to the committee now. Who would like to, any questions regarding the project? Yes, Councillor Oosterhoff. Um, I just wanna applaud this uh, program um, because I, <laughs> I take active uh, role in this as well. And I think it's a, a great one to um, keep going for the city. So I don't know a whole lot about it, but I, I heard what you said and I, I'm reading it and I just think it's a great thing to do. And I'm sorry, I don't have any questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Oosteroff. Did you guys not hear me? Yes, heard you loud and clear. Okay. Um, okay, thanks, Mr. Chair. It's Councillor Osanic here. <laughs> and so- What did I, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ian, it's so nice to see you in person because I've sent you probably like hundreds of emails. You probably hate seeing my name. So, so nice to see you in person. This is what is great for, right? And uh, so, yeah, thanks for this report. Um, I remember when the survey came out and it's excellent to see that there were 228 responses and that so many of them were favorable. So, I'm like so excited about this because like sometimes when pitch in Kingston comes in, like the history of it used to just be one day, then it went over an entire weekend. And then until the pandemic, you know, it would be between like one weekend to the next weekend, which was great because everyone has lives and sometimes you have a hockey tournament, something like that in April. And so it gives everybody more time to do it. And I've only always appreciated that city staff um, public works, right? Like if I'm doing a roadway and Bath Road is like two kilometer span, I don't have to put all the bags in one pile. I can just kind of put one and then another one and then another one. And then the truck just kind of goes all along. I always um, appreciated that. And so this is really good. And so just so I understand what we're hearing, even though there's a pandemic and um, Pitch in Kingston is being um, postponed, as of April 26th, we'll still have the kickoff and people would still be able to pick up the bags. Like, it's also great that they get this package, right? Because that was another thing with Pitching Kingston. Um, a long time ago, it used to be you go to Lake Ontario Park and Public Works would be there and you would drive through and you would get your gloves and everything. And now since it's gone through, um, you know, like uh, Tim Hortons, you get a bag or sometimes the location will only give you one bag. You can't even get more than one and you can't get gloves and so it's awesome to see that we're actually going to be giving out a package of gloves bags plural hand sanitizer even better and an information like that's so perfect so we would still be able to kick it off on april 26 you think is that what we would tell our constituents so through the chair yes that that is um our objective um we will be ready to go for that date um, pending no um, um, opposition from public health, um, we will be ready to go for the 26th, yes. Okay, that is awesome. And 
Um, I'll probably be emailing um, Julie Salter Keen. She was just on the last one, but she's not on um, this meeting anyway. Um, so last year when we had pitch in Kingston, and I know Sustainable Kingston does pitch in Kingston, but when we did pitch in Kingston and then it was canceled because of COVID, um, I sit on the board of the conservation area. And so um, at the conservation area, we found out that other municipal municipalities still did a roadside cleanup. Up, like Rideau Lakes, they still gave out garbage bags and they still did a big, you know, roadside cleanup, even though for Kingston, we didn't saying that it was because of COVID. So I'll email Julie Salter Keen about that afterwards, since she's not on the line anymore. But I just wanted to let you know about Rideau Lakes still doing it. Um, for the garbage can locations, right? So during the 2018 election, I had three streets in particular that asked where they have like a pathway next to them if they could get a garbage can. And, and then I emailed Public Works if we could get a garbage can at that location. And at the time, I think it was 2018, maybe it was the 2014 election. I think it was 2018. Anyway, um, Public Works replied back that they were at capacity for garbage cans, right? So do you think I could try those three? So those three locations, as far as I know, never did get a garbage can. Do you think I could try to send um, a ticket to like a service request to contact us and try to get a garbage can at those locations? Well, you certainly, certainly can. Up. I see Sheila has a hand up. Oh, she may okay. have a good response for you. Or Sorry, uh, <laughs> I, I, probably, I probably don't need to answer this. So yes, if you, uh, if you submit the, uh, the locations uh, on a service request and have uh, our staff take a look at it. Um, I, I don't, it must've been 2014, Councillor Osana, because I don't remember any of that, but I, I doubt we'd be at capacity in terms of the cans, but sometimes it's the location. We do try to put them not, in places where we where we'll get like household garbage in those cans, as you know, so we're we're always balancing a bit of a of a fine line there. But but if you have those locations, if you send them in, we can take a look at them and assess them and get back to you. Super, thanks. And if they happen to have already been responded and there has been a garbage can there, just let me know. <laughs> I'll be like more than happy to go. Yeah, they, they are there. Um, that I think the last time I got an answer, it was no. And surprisingly enough, like, well, not surprisingly at all, the locations are because there's a high school nearby. And, you know, um, like what, what's it gonna take to teach the young people? Like, that's just so scary to me that young people are littering. You know, you think it would be like my generation that maybe didn't grow up in the seventies with the, the hoot, don't pollute, you know, that it never really sunk in and they're still littering. The fact that it's high school students that have like the biggest, you know, like along the pathway, so much litter it, to me is just so disturbing. But um, what's my last question? My last question is, right, I just wanted to show you this. And then there is a question, Mr. Chair, right? So out of all the years I've done pitching Kingston and like done like six, 15 years of picking up garbage during pitching Kingston along Collins Bay Road, Bath Road and uh, Princess Street near Westbrook and then Westbrook Road, if my back hasn't kicked out, this has been my success story. So this is along... Prince, uh, sorry, along Collins Bay Road, and it's between um, Taylor Kid Boulevard and Princess Street, and it's just down from um, the Party Golf, and this is like a big, I don't know, it's just a big gravel area, it used to be owned by MTO, and now it's run by, um, looked after by the city, oh sorry, this is the picture, so it's right off of Collins Bay Road, and it's got like a big cell tower right here, and that used to be like it used to be a waiting um, place for taxis and people making conversations so that they can talk on their cell phone without driving and school buses. And there was nothing but litter here all the time. I used to fill up three garbage bags every spring just by picking up the litter. It was also a big dumping site. People were dumping couches because it drops off to the uh, forest down there and drunk dumping off um fridges and sofa beds and then I got public works or maybe it was Chris Leith right I, I don't I guess Chris did work for public works and he put up this um no dumping sign 
And now when I go by it, I'm like, I'm so afraid to jinx it and even talking about it, but I thought I would do it for this report tonight. There's like hardly any dumping. Like I can just, you know, like do half a bag of garbage, not even half a bag of garbage. Last year, it was just like very minimal. I did pitch in Kingston, even though it was canceled because I didn't want the garbage to accumulate, right? That's the, that's the story. When people start to see garbage, then they think it's okay to dump and I needed to keep it clean. But when what a big difference this um, uh, no dumping sign is. So Commissioner Kidd, <laughs> um, if I did a request for maybe two other locations for a no dumping, can I do that through a service request? Only because like on the other side of Collins Bay Road, this is the west side on the east side, there's been a lot of people because there's no homes and they're you know out the window and garbage along Collins Bay Road Maybe like if I did a service request to get one more sign, it would, the benefit is that then city staff or volunteers wouldn't have to be going along Collins Bay Road every April, picking up signs if maybe this could scare people as it's done so well on the west side. Commissioner Kidd, and then we'll, I'll recognize Councillor Stroud who is here in hand only, but I understand he's working tonight. So, uh, Commissioner uh, Kidd. Uh, 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 through you, Mr. Chair, uh, yes. Um, yeah, absolutely, put a, put a service request in. We can look at the situation and assess it. I can't guarantee you sitting here tonight that, that uh, you know, we can put signs up and we can do all of these things, but we're more than happy to assess it. And, and I think the point uh, that you made is really, really valid, which is, once something, you know, when something goes to a point where they're, where it's already littered, others think it's okay. It, it's like, they, well, they know it's not okay, but everybody else is doing it. So, yeah. you know, I, I do think it's important, but we will definitely, if you, if you make that submission, we will assess that and, and get back to you. Great. Thank you so much. Litter is near and dear to my heart because we've spent so many years picking up litter on the roadways in um, the suburbs. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Osanek. Uh, Councillor Stroud, are you here? Can you hear me? We can indeed. Yes, uh, yes, I am still at the hospital. Luckily, I'm waiting for some test results on my patient, so I have a moment. I wanted to ask staff about um, the issue in my district, which well, just use uh, Breakwater Park as an example. It's not the only location, but it's a good way to focus our thoughts. So uh, we all know uh, that it was in the media last week. There was, uh, there was with the nice weather, there's lots of people there. Everybody knows about that. They may not know about the next day how there were dozens of, of, of Queen students down uh, there picking up litter because that was one of the aspects of that, of that day. It wasn't just the... Uh, the, the not following the guidelines, but it was also, there was a lot of litter there uh, left left from the number of, of people that were using the park, but there were uh, other students cleaning it up. That wasn't organized. That was a volunteer thing. It tends to happen on a regular basis with uh, certain students that uh, similar to Councillor Osanek have a, a volunteer spirit and they just show up when there's litter in one of the spaces that they all use and they clean it up. So I was just, that leads me to my question. I was wondering uh, what kind of uh, liaison do we have with like AMS and uh, the student bodies at Queens to coordinate efforts? And if there's this, this uh, community, you know, the various community groups, I'm just wondering what, what's our history of working with Queens and, and what, what, uh, what can we do to improve uh, synergies with that part of the student body that really wants to chip in and help out uh, similar to uh, the other citizens of Kingston. Good question. Uh, Ms. Ridgely. Through the chair, I think, you know, whomever wants to help clean up Kingston, we are more than welcome to work with all community groups, schools, uh, whether it's St. Lawrence, Queens, RMC, any of the, the public school boards, um, they can out uh, through uh, the contact us portal, uh, call the 546 
zero or, you know, reach out to myself and, and we can make that happen. Um, you know, we, we want this program to be as successful as possible and getting the most buy-in from all parties is how that's going to happen. Okay, thank you. Um, specifically though, I'd like to know whether we, we do communicate with, uh, I guess it would be the AMS, the best uh, contact point about coordinating efforts. And also uh, to, on the subject of, of garbage cans and, uh, and, and that uh, route. So there isn't very much capacity at either Gord Downey Pier or Breakwater Park for garbage. And I'm wondering because it's so close to a heavy student populated area if the reason is because we're trying to avoid household garbage in those, in those bins. I know that does happen at City Park um, with the heavy student populations around there. Or, or, or just assume it's, it's just a heavy population anyway. Um, I'm wondering if there's any thought of increasing the, the bin capacity at the pier or Breakwater Park for, of course, when they're back open again. I see Commissioner so, Kidd has her hand up. Did you want to address that? Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Uh, through, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, we will, uh, I, I'm not aware uh, if we have any ongoing and regular contact with AMS, but, but I think that's a great idea. Um, I was not aware that there were students voluntarily picking up at, at Breakwater, which I think is also wonderful. It'd be nice if more people knew that and, and were aware that we have some really great students. So um, yeah, I can, uh, I can make a point of having our team reach out to AMS and make them aware of this neighborhood program. And I think this just makes it really, really simple for them. Anytime they're ready, they can call, we'll, we'll get uh, a package ready for them and we'll come and pick up what, what, uh, what they are able to gather. Uh, with regard to the total number of cans, um, I don't think it's a, a matter of not wanting to have as many cans there because of the student population and the proximity. Um, it may be just this time of year uh, in particular, because we're, we're still being a bit cautious we're with the ground and being able to, to travel across grass and, and things to access the cans. But we can, uh, we can look and uh, I can ask um, the, uh, I can ask Mr. Strabinski about, about that and the number of cans and, and uh, the, ask him if it's, if it's a different service level that we're delivering compared to the other major parks. Great. That's all I have for now. Thank you and keep up the good work. Thank you. I, if Councillor Osanic will take the chair, I can talk a little bit about AMS and other things. Um, AMS chair. in the past through Sustainable Kingston has done a kind of campus area cleanup uh, because I've volunteered with them. They also, uh, after homecoming weekends, after uh, St. Patty's Day, any of those big litter events that happen on campus, uh, they've always organized with a lot of neighborhood people joining in uh, a cleanup for the six or seven blocks surrounding the main campus. So that, that's definitely somebody you want to uh, contact regarding that. Um, the issue is that they have really, really good municipal commissioners whose term is one year. And so, you know, sometimes you get a really good cleanup last year and not so good this year. But if, if it was something that uh, you wanted to, to approach them about, that would be great. I know, I know Sustainable Kingston have supplied them with with the materials they need for the spring cleanup every year. The other thing, Sustainable Kingston, and you may want to go to planning committee as well. We've got a good uh, roster now of neighborhood and community organizations. And I know in the past uh, with the uh, pitch in week, we've had volunteers that have kind of adopted a park. So uh, the Williamsville Community Association has worked with Victoria Park. I've organized through Memorial Center, a Memorial Center cleanup every year with pitching. So that's, uh, if you went to the farmer's market 
at there, I'm sure they'd be keen to to do a cleanup uh, on it uh, because they're quick to point out when there is something needed. So, so that would be a good good group to approach as well. But definitely approach the community neighborhood associations. So, and we haven't taken good advantage of schools. Uh, St. Peter's School is half a block away and uh, uh, 4th Street Park is right behind it. And they would be, I'm sure, quite happy on a sunny day to take a grade seven or eight class out to clean up the park, which would be good. So, so I think that's a good idea. So thank you, Councillor Osanek. And Councillor Doherty. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I want to just thank the my fellow for your questions because you asked a lot that I had, and uh, I am going to submit some service requests myself. So that's really great for that's for signage as well as bins. For signage, uh, also. Um, it's not just streets, but it's also our streams that could benefit for some signage too, because a lot of garbage gets dumped into our streams as well. Um, do we have garbage bins at all of the bus shelters now? Yes, uh, Commissioner Kidd. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, we don't have them at all of the bus shelters, but we do have them at most of the major shelters. And, and it's some of them we have the nation cans uh, and uh, recycling depots. Uh, are, we, are we planning on putting them everywhere? Because I noticed when I, I did get eventually one at the bus stop at uh, on, on Key Street near, near um, uh, Moorwood Avenue, but uh, it, but it was in it and it's always full, the garbage bin that is there now. It, but it did make me think about other bus stops. So I would really suggest that maybe we could look at that. Um, at those locations because it doesn't make sense for people. Um, so we do try to do by, you know, by the uh, heaviest locations. Uh, every bus also has a garbage container on it. So, you know, we also encourage people just to use that container. Um, it's difficult. We have benches and the benches uh, also uh, have garbage receptacles and that's a contractor that manages those. So we're, we're always, we're always looking again, we have to be, we're being, a little bit cautious because we're just not able, we don't have the funds to be able to collect at every stop. But if there, if there is a particularly problematic stop um, where, we, where we have a lot of traffic and, uh, and there's no can there, again, we could, we could take a look at that if you brought that to our attention. Uh, I just, uh, just on, on the previous uh, questions from Councillor Stroud, um, uh, Mr. Stravinsky is listening, although he's not on the call tonight. So he did send me a note indicating that we have worked with AMS in the past to do cleanup efforts after homecoming. And we've also worked with RMC. And so again, I think during the pandemic, some of those connections have been lost. Definitely, I know AMS uh, gets a, a, new, uh, a new lead every year and that makes it a little, a little difficult. So maybe the initiative needs to be with us just to make sure that we reach out every year and not, not waiting for that to happen. So I think we can do a little bit more on that front. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and also, I just wonder if you could speak to, I don't know why people do this. It doesn't make sense. They put their dog waste in a plastic bag and then leave the bags lying around, even the, in some location where there are bins not far away. Um, have we ever had a, like a, a little bit of a campaign to educate people not to do that? Like it doesn't make sense and it's very unsightly, but... Um, people do it constantly. And sometimes the reason is that there's no bin nearby and where there should be, but often uh, uh, there's no excuse for it. Yeah, that's, yes, Commissioner. Yeah, I, I'm not aware of any specific uh, educational campaigns uh, around uh, proper disposal or the way we'd prefer people to dispose of the dog waste. Uh, we. Uh, we do, we do recognize that it's an issue. I know when uh, a few years ago when, um, when Ms. Roberts was the head of public of solid waste, she had looked at 
as part of our contracts uh, options for recycling dog waste, but there's nothing uh, available in this particular area. So, I, I mean, the, the most disheartening thing is just people just do the right thing. And I, I you know, on so many fronts, um, uh, we, we, we could try to educate, um, but I, I don't have anything specific planned at this point in time. Maybe our communications team could help a little bit with it. Even social media or some signs at bus stops or public locations. And but but every now and then some social media reminders that dog waste belongs in bins. And thanks for doing the right thing, putting it in the bag. Now do the next step, <laughs> follow the next step, and put it actually in a bin. And because it's you see it all over the place. Um, uh, so. Thanks, and I just have one last question, and that is about um, basically the the kind of um, outreach and, and campaign we'll have to let people know of this campaign, the the um, um, and where they can get their their packages. Um, so yeah, how are we going to let people know through the chair? Um, but yes, we we have a well well done up communications plan um, done by our communications officer for this program uh, where we have um, a variety of different types of communication. We have a radio ad planned. We have a Kingston This Week ad planned uh, along with Kerbeck signage at various premier park locations um, and then continual messaging on social media and a website page as well. Excellent. Thanks. Very exciting because uh, Pigeon Day Kingston only being one week and or oh, one day first and one week it being all year round is fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Thank you very much uh, to staff. Looking forward to the. I was a little upset when it looked like we were losing Pigeon Week, but this this looks promising. Thank you. So, any any further questions? Seeing none, I don't believe we have any members of the public on, do we, Julia? No, I was just going to uh, come on and say we don't have any members of the public with us. So, yeah, we're all good. Good. Uh, so, uh, are there any motions? There aren't. Any notices of motion? Seeing none, other business, seeing none, correspondence, I don't believe we have any on file. Uh, date of our next meeting is Tuesday, June 15th at 6 p.m. So, our favorite time, motion to adjourn. Thank you, Councillor Osanic, Councillor Doherty. All those in favor? Great. Let's go watch the Jays win. We'll see you later. <laughs>